Wouldn't it be nice to have several thought leaders in your industry know and love your brand? Start a podcast, invite your industry's thought leaders to be guests on your show and start reaping the benefits of having a network full of industry influencers. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm Jonathan Green. And I'm James Carberry. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. We are here today with Casey Zanetti. She is the VP of Marketing at In Demand Interpreting. Casey, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Hi, James. I am, uh, I'm excited to chat with you today, Casey. We just had uh, had a great conversation offline and uh, talking about uh, how how you've been able to establish a predictable revenue strategy uh, and and really uh, you know creating a pipeline of opportunities that have have led to forty to fifty percent year over year growth, which I just think is incredibly impressive. Uh, but before we get into that, I, I want our listeners to just have a little bit more context uh, uh, about you. Can you tell our listeners just a little bit about In Demand and what you and your team are up to over there? Right. So. Um... In Demand Interpreting is an organization that provides, um, it's like Skype on steroids in the healthcare environment. And so we are a software as a service and our service is medically qualified interpreters. And we help providers have better communications with their limited English proficient or deaf patients to provide better outcomes. Got it. Wonderful. So uh, as you were telling me offline, Casey, you said uh, when you first stepped into the organization, they were doing no marketing at that point. Um, so you were really tasked with coming in and building kind of a marketing engine from from nothing. Can you walk us through what that looked like? Sure. So I think with a lot of startups, um, they don't have marketing to begin with. It really has to do with technology, engineers, um, sales, and then there becomes a certain point in their maturity where they need to bring in marketing. And so it was, of course, a marketer's dream to come into a scenario where um, there wasn't um, really any marketing. And I got to start from the ground up and take everything I had learned for the past decade plus and um, build an engine to be able to really provide qualified leads to the outside sales organization so that they would be able to close and win and move into revenue. And so what I was able to do is, I, I guess for me, one of the tension points between marketing and lead generation was really being able to follow those leads to fruition. And so one of the things that I felt very strongly about, especially in an enterprise sales scenario, was that the leads that were created actually went to the inside sales organization that would then be able to um, nurture those leads and pass them along as qualified to the outside sales organization. So it was really important to me to actually have inside sales report into marketing. And, and I, something else that you, you, you said to me as we were talking offline, Casey, that stuck out, you said um, just the focus on really understanding the business objectives coming into it. What, what did that process look like for you to determine what are the goals? What are, what are the objectives that the business as a whole is trying to reach? Uh, And then you were, you, you kind of reverse engineered your, your, your process and the engine you built to map to that. Can you talk a, a bit about that? Yeah, I think it's really important for marketers to understand what the business objectives were. And, and specifically in this organization, it was really about rapid growth. And so what I needed to do is figure out how to fill that pipeline with qualified leads as quickly as possible. And what I really wanted to understand from the marketing perspective is what initiatives were being successful, how were they creating leads, were they the right kind of leads that would actually, you know, flow through the pipeline and close as deals that we would actually want within the organization and how to prioritize that. Um, so that was number one. And then number two was how did, how did we get those prospects, the information they need 
needed through the pipeline to be able to make purchasing decisions. So by the time the marketing qualified leads were passed along to inside sales, that they were already pretty warm and pre-qualified um, so that our inside sales organization is very strategic and um, and very high level. They're not dialing for dollars. They're really looking to partner and educate so it's a very consultative sale mm. and prepare those qualified leads to pass along to the outside sales organization and then being able to dial in. So I think one of the really important things that we did is found a really good CRM mm. as well as marketing automation that could work together so that we could really keep an eye on the, the lead pool um, and as they were nurtured and as they, they grew and were ready and ripe, we could pass those along to um, the inside sales organization. What were the specific technologies that you decided to go with there? So we use Salesforce and HubSpot. Okay. So using Salesforce uh, as, as your CRM and HubSpot as your marketing automation platform, you were able to, to essentially create uh, educational content that is guiding each one of these prospects kind of along uh, and then at a certain point that gets that gets handed over to somebody on the inside sales team so that they can kind of further the conversation in a, in a more in-depth way. That's right. And, and we also do, this is a, a, another aside, but we do what we call the five to thrive process. And so the VP of client service management, the VP of sales and I got together and we looked at what is our special sauce as an organization and who are our target audiences and what's really important to them. And and by doing that, what we did is we built out a whole strategy around kind of this consultative sale and growing our lead pool into the kind of client that would really thrive within our organization. And so we really... Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, what did that conversation look like? Kind of what were the, you, you, you know, is three of the stakeholders, you know, client services yourself, and then the VP of sales, you know, what were the contributions that each of you made to kind of come out with an outcome that, uh, that, that you wanted to come out with? Well, I think number one is really identifying our ideal client. Um, and that is the size, the persona, you know, initially we got a lot of small deals and, um, and, and that was fine, but it really wasn't kind of where we were headed or where the industry healthcare was going, mm. which is these large um, health systems. And so if we wanted to keep up with, with that, we really needed to look at the entire health system and understand how it operated and who the players and decision making across the whole system were. And by doing that, we understood what our call points were into the healthcare environment for um, the inside sales group and even backing out further for marketing and who we wanted to be marketing to and who had skin in the game for the success of their language access programs. And so that's sort of how we did it. Got it. And so, so going back now to something you said a little bit earlier, Casey, about inside sales reporting up to you into marketing. Talk to us about why that has ended up being uh, a, a really smart move in your context. Right. Well, I think they get a lot of insight. I mean, I mean there are a couple of reasons. I, number one is I, you know, early in my career, I, I had bad experiences with marketing and inside sales um, not being collaborative and a team. Um, and that, that creates a lot of friction. And one of my biggest challenges, I think, as a marketer is trying to close the loop on um, all of your initiatives and how those actually manifest in closed deals and ultimately revenue. Um, and so being able to keep that connection between the marketing qualified leads that are generated, being passed along to inside sales and their diligence in following those leads through to, you know, qualifying them and passing them along to the outside sales organization and then being able to link that in the CRM so that you you have all the data there and you can run reports and you can really look at um, the, where you're having the most success and where you want to put more energy and where you're not having good success and where you want to maybe pull back a little bit. 
And so I think having Inside Sales as a partner there is one of those critical, you know, it's kind of the special sauce, I think, in why we've been able to be so successful. And then they really bridge between marketing and um, the outside sales organization. And especially with our consultative sales model, it's really important for them to understand the objectives of their RSD and be able to do a smooth transition from the folks they've been talking to to the RSD so that those leads can keep moving down the pipeline and don't get lost. You you had mentioned something earlier, Casey, about inside sales kind of prior to them reporting up to marketing. There was almost this feeling that if they took a lead from marketing, then they weren't doing their job. If if they didn't source the lead from the beginning, that they were somehow inadequate. So once it shifted organizationally and they started reporting directly to marketing, did that change in that they were now measured on both leads that they sourced as well as leads that were sourced for marketing? Or how how did that mindset start to shift? Right. Well, they're... They have incentives that are built around their sales qualified leads Um, and then also on revenue at the back end. So they have skin in the game all the way through the process to ensure, you know, solid leads. Um, Not really answering your question. Um, I, I think that what happens is that when you're partnered and when you're all working together, what it creates this amazing synergy where marketing is actually getting feedback from inside sales on how to provide them with better leads and, and inside sales values marketing because they're getting such qualified leads. So I think at first it was hard because I, I, I met, I was met with the same sort of resistance, but once we tried it out and just kind of rolled up our sleeves and said, okay, this is new for all of us. Um, I believe, I believe that this can work and that it will benefit everybody. Everybody just kind of sucked it up and they went for it. And the, and our success is proof in the pudding. Got it. So did that look like of you as, as their leader kind of holding them accountable to saying, Hey, if you turn down a marketing qualified lead, you have to tell us why. And then you're taking that feedback that informs, okay, well, if, if they turn this down, then we're going to adjust what we're doing from a marketing perspective so that they don't turn it down. Or, or did it look a little bit different than that? It looks a little different than that. I think that, that what happens is, is that they're not wasting their time with leads that don't mean anything. They're, we're waiting until they're really, they're, they're not just, so the way I think about it is we have this lead pool and the lead pool is nurtured by marketing. And by the time a, a marketing qualified lead has bubbled up, it means that they're ready to have a real conversation. Got it. So it was a matter of sales informing kind of what things needed to happen during that kind of nurturing process for them to actually be ready for a conversation? Yeah, yeah. I think that that's part of it is just who are our targets? What do they need to know to make a buying decision? How do we educate them to use our product? And when I first got here, nobody actually had even heard of video remote interpreting or VRI. The market, it was a very new disruptive technology. And so part of it was just educating the market about what it was. But because it's such a compelling um, ROI and provide such efficiencies with their operations, it's, um, you know, once they're educated about it, they want to have more conversations. They, they want to be moved down the pipeline. So, I, I mean, I think part of the benefit I have, too, is having a great product with a real story um, with real benefits for the end user. So that makes a big difference as well. Casey, I want to I want to close our interview. You know, you've been able to demonstrate your value as as a marketer. You know, you know, established pipeline full of opportunities that led to forty to fifty percent year over year growth. So to say that you've demonstrated your value is probably a bit of an understatement. Uh, but for for the marketers listening to this, maybe they're struggling with how do I show that what we're doing over here in marketing is actually valuable? You know, do you have any words of advice for that marketer? Well, I think data is critical. It's not about bragging about the data, about, wow, I got this number of leads, I got these. It's more, how do you loop that back to the business and how do you show? So I can go back now and I can show over the last um, 
four quarters that every deal that closed was actually due to efforts of the inside sales and marketing organization. And when you can do that and you can demonstrate the value, it changes the conversation. Got it. And so if someone's feeling like they're not demonstrating their value, what would you say is the first step they can take to to go down the path that you went down? Well, number one, understand the business objectives. Um, understand um, who your partners need to be. So, you know, it really helps to be on the executive team because um, you you have your foot in the door to a conversation that, you know, you may not as a director, um, but, but definitely having a place at the table. But the way to do that is actually to, to prove, um, like I just talked about, but understanding the business Partnering with um, the other VPs, so especially for net new business, partnering with the VP of sales is really, really important. For me, the special sauce was not only creating marketing leads, but owning the inside sales organization and being able to leverage them in qualifying the leads so that what the initiatives that marketing did actually flowed through in a very meaningful and purposeful way to the um, RSDs who closed the business. I think that structure works really well for us. And ultimately, um, being able to track all of the information through Salesforce um, to be able to show what initiatives are being successful. Casey, this has been fantastic. You've shared a ton of uh, valuable insights. If there's somebody listening, maybe they want to stay connected with you or they're they're interested in learning more about in-demand interpreting, uh, what is the best way for them to go about doing both of those things? Well, our um, website here is um, indemandinterpreting.com. So you can always go on the website um, or you can look me up. I'm Casey Zanetti at LinkedIn. So you can look me up on LinkedIn. Happy to talk to you. Thanks, James. No problem at all, Casey. This is, this again, this has been fantastic. So I really appreciate you sharing your time with us today and uh, excited to stay connected with you. Great. Thank you so much. To ensure that you never miss an episode of the B2B Growth Show, subscribe to the show on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. This guarantees that every episode will get delivered directly to your device. If you or someone you know would be an incredible guest for the B2B Growth Show, email me at jonathan at sweetfishmedia.com and let us know. We love connecting with B2B executives, and we love sharing their wisdom and perspective with our audience. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.